Naming acids is uh, something that involves following the lines. Um, so we have three basic situations for naming acids. We have acids that end in IDE, ITE, and ATE. Now this, this is all based on the anion. Uh, so for example, HC, the anion is chloride. It ends in IDE. So we follow the rule hydro stem ic and followed by the word acid. Hydrochloric acid. Now, if we had sites, this anion, SO3, we follow the rule stem followed by OUS, so sulfurous acid. And then if it ends in ATE, so for example, nitrate, um, it's the stem followed by IC, nitric acid. Let's do a few examples. HF, so we identify the anion and so that anion is fluoride. So since fluoride ends in IDE, the rule is hydro stem ic. So we put the prefix hydro in front. The stem is the same, and the suffix is IC, followed by the word acid. So hydrofluoric acid. Next one. H2S. So we identify the anion, we have sulfide for the anion. So this ends in IDE, so the rule again is hydrostem ic. The stem, still sulf, the Prefix hydro goes in front, ic goes at the end, followed by the word acid. Now, unfortunately, we, we break a lot of rules in chemistry. We learn rules just so we can learn their exceptions. So hydrosulfic acid is not actually the name for this one. You know, that just doesn't sound right. It's kind of like this exception from the example. Um, we actually add the letters to spell out sulfur, so we need to add a UR in here. So it's actually hydrosulfuric acid. So there are some exceptions that just be memorized. Next one. And in this case, ends in I. So we follow the I. So the stem followed O U S and the word acid. How about H three O four? Polyatomic ion, P O four. That's now the ending or the suffix is ate. Plus, if it ends in e, it's stem ic and acid. So we have phos and ic and acid. Now you might have noticed I left the h off. Well, we have another exception here. We change the letters a little bit in this case. Um, phosphoric, phosphoric acid. So we have to add uh, the letters to spell out the full prefix here, phosphor. 
in this case, again, to be memorized. H the anion is the polyatomic ion, cyanide. It ends in I. This is interesting. Atomic ions, the rule B or C, eights. But cyanide is an exception. Usually rule A is only for the monatomic anions, like a Cl minus or I minus um, or F minus. But in this case, we have a polyatomic ion falling into rule one. It ends in IDE, so it's hydrostemic acid. So we have the stem, the prefix, and the suffix, forward acid. Hydrocyanic acid. Well, we can also go the other way on these types of problems. We can start with the formula and figure out start with the name and figure out the formula. So we're going to write the formulas for the acids. So let's take, for example, carbonic acid. So the key here is to look at the look at the parts of the name. If there is a prefix there, then we note that this one doesn't have a prefix, but it does have the suffix IC. So if it has the suffix IC or the ending IC, we know that it uh, is coming from this rule. So the the IC means that the ion ended with 8. So the ion must have ended with A-T-E. And if we bring down our, our stem, we can see that we have carbonate. Carbonate. It's a little bit off-centered off there, but carbonate. So carbonate has a formula. Carbonate's formula is it's a polyatomic ion. CO3 2 minus. So now we need to figure out the overall formula of the compound. Well, what does it combine with? Notice all these other examples, it's always hydrogen combining with the anion. So we know that it's hydrogen ions that are combining with the carbonate. So now we just need to do the crisscross method as we've learned before. Um, I'm going to take this, I'm going to crisscross it around. So I'll have H2, make that the, that 2 the subscript, CO3. And so there's our neutralized um, compound, the formula for carbonic acid. So how about another example? Let's take a look at um, sulfurous acid. So again, we look at the parts of the name. It ends in O-U-S in this case. So the O-U-S means that it had to have come from an ite, an ion that ended in ite. So we know that we had here an I-T-E. Um, so if we take the stem down, now in this case, a couple of letters were added here with the exception. So the stem is just sulf, the sulf part. The UR was added in. We see that we have sulfite. All right, so sulfite, its formula is O3. And so now we just need to combine with S minus hydrogen with SO3, Chris H2, at 3
Next, we have hydrobromic acid. So again, we look at the parts of the name. Um, in this case, we have ick at the end, but we also have a prefix here, hydro. So that means we are looking at this role, hydrostem ick acid. The ick and the hydro mean, those, both of those together mean that we have an anion that ends in IDE. So this anion ends in IDE. And if we pull down this brome, we see that we have brome, bromide. All right, well, bromide is monatomic, so that's just Br minus. So that gets combined with hydrogen, and it makes the formula HBr. The next topic is organic acids. Let's look briefly at organic acids. So if we were to name these acids as examples, organic acids follow a different uh, set of rules. We use the prefix to show the number of carbons, and then we follow that with the suffix OIC and the word acid. So it's the prefix, the number of carbons, followed by O, I, C, and acid. So let's look at this first one here. So we count the number of carbons. We have one, two, three carbons. So one, two, three carbons. Now, since we have three carbons, we're going to use prefixes that we've learned before. And those prefixes are meth, eth, pro, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec. Meth stands for one carbon, eth is two, pro is three, but is four, Pent is 5, hex is 6, hep 7, oct 8, non 9, and dec 10. So this one has three carbons, so that means we're using the prefix pro. So pro, and the suffix then is um, OIC and the word acid. Um, now in this case, um, so pro for the prefix, we have the so we have propane, propane. So we take the alkane name. This is the original alkane name for a three carbon organic compound. But we have to take off the ending, the suffix, and replace that with OIC and then the word acid. So in this case, we're going to have Pro, panoic, and the word acid. Again, it's a little tricky. Sometimes we keep a few extra letters from that suffix. Um, so in this case, uh, for organic acids, actually we take the last letter, the E, and that gets replaced by the OIC and acid. So I actually misspoke there. It's just the last letter, the E, that we take. So let's do this next one. Um, if, we're going, if we're going backwards, if we have the name and we're writing the formula, we again identify the parts. So we know it's organic based on this ending, OIC and acid. The hept, tells us the number of carbons. So hept refers to seven. So we have seven carbons, and then it has the carboxylic acid group um, on the end. So 
we're going to write this structure by drawing seven carbons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now on the last car carbon, this structure makes it an organic acid. The C double bonded to an oxygen connected then to an oxygen with a hydrogen. Um, so we draw in that structure and then everything else is filled in with hydrogens. Now if we were to write the condensed structural formula like in this picture, it would just be shortening this, instead of drawing all the bonds to the hydrogens, we shorten it so this is CH3 to CH2 to CH2 to CH2, uh, CH2, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one, C double bond O to OH, or sometimes it may want, it may show this also as COOH. Those are two different ways that could be written out.